As a new Cold War heats up, now more than ever, it's important that enemy subs can be destroyed. Things have changed considerably from the last time superpowers faced off against each other in an arms race, and since the rapid advancement in technology, there are now several ways to sink a sub. Let's take a look at the most effective. To destroy a sub, first you need to find it. This is where sonar comes into play. Using sound waves to locate and identify objects underwater remains the main way ships and aircraft find submarines. Anti-sub warfare is all about getting valid information from background signals, called signal-to-noise ratio. Anytime that can be improved with a software upgrade to a newer digital system, the Navy jumps all over it. Software upgrades can vastly improve existing systems and provide an affordable way for the Navy to keep up with enemy submarine advances. But there are completely new sonar techniques on the rise. This has been accelerated by the civilian oil industry and the processing power of miniaturized digital components. Synthetic aperture sonar measures the slight differences in a load of acoustic pings of the same location to get details as to what's beneath. Another new technique uses low-frequency sonar, or less than 1000 Hz, to increase the system's range. Next, lasers can also be used as great rangefinders and target designators, just like the laser scope on a rifle. Lasers can also be used to detect a submarine by bouncing light off its hull. Even LEDs are strong enough now to do this. The problem with both of these approaches is attenuation, which is when the light converts into heat or is otherwise absorbed by the water. But modern computing power can solve this problem. New lasers and LEDs can be precisely tuned to wavelengths in which the light energy suffers smaller losses. This increases their range of detection to operationally useful distances. The Navy hopes that quieter targets such as diesel-electric enemy subs will find out that being silent is not enough to protect them. In terms of vessels that can hunt subs, surface ships now have the potential to find and kill subs even though they used to be the submergible's prey. The U.S. has three ships as its primary sub-destroyers, Navy Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, Ticonderoga-class cruisers, and Oliver Hazard Perry-class frigates. These ships are being equipped with enough new technology to take advantage of all available sensors to see what's happening at depths. The Navy's most advanced technology is the SQQ-89 AV-15 ASW combat systems. This uses passive and active sonar to find hostile submarines, mines, and torpedoes. 30 of these were initially placed in the Navy fleet, with this number thought to be over 60 now. The Navy's new sub-fighting objective may be good news for the littoral combat ship, a new kind of boat made to fight in shallow water. These ships have a new towed array and variable depth sonar that, especially while working in tandem, can stop subs lurking near shorelines. They will come equipped with the SQQ-89 AV system and a helicopter deck, everything needed to find subs in the modern world. There's also another advantage the littoral combat ships have, a new sensor called the Coastal Battlefield Reconnaissance and Analysis, or COBRA. The technology has formally achieved initial operational capability. It did this after completing initial operational tests and evaluation on the MQ-8B. Its primary function is detecting mines and submarines while keeping the LCS and its crew at a safe distance. This is a huge benefit to the LCS, as having an improved technological capacity to find and detect enemy mines and submarines near the surface expands its mission envelope and provides needed protection for offensive ship operations. Previously, missions like these were only possible by putting sailors or marines on the beach in advance of a landing, exposing them to casualties and revealing an intended landing zone. Having a small helicopter detachment able to launch and land off the back of the LCS is an important part of the Navy's emerging strategy for surface warfare, countermine warfare, and anti-submarine warfare. This helicopter-like Fire Scout drone can now operate an advanced sensor, giving it increased ability to detect and destroy enemy mines and submarines from a littoral combat ship, according to reports. But it's not just at sea that subs can be found. It's also in the air. The P-8A Poseidon is the Navy's new 130-foot submarine finding plane. It has detection equipment that can find submarines from altitude, including gyro-stabilized CCD-TV and image intensifiers, 
infrared sensors, and 126 sono buoys, which are sensor devices dropped by a rotary launcher into the water to generate sonar pulses that show what's beneath the surface. The aircraft was developed for $35 billion, but initial reports pointed to a lack of ability to track subs. However, it seems like the plane's flaws were in the plane's sensor integration and data transfer. That means software fixes can be sought out, which is much better than having hardware problems or structural deficiencies. While there have been a lot of advancements when it comes to hunting and killing subs, the methods for attacking these vessels remain, at heart, the same short-range game of hide-and-seek practiced in the 1980s. But ranges of the kill shot are getting longer, especially when it comes to firing Mark 54 lightweight torpedoes from a vertical launch tube. The torpedo starts as a ballistic missile and then flies to splash down above the target. Once in the water, the Mark 54 finds its target with a short-range sonar seeker. The main difference between the 80s and now is that weapons will continue to get smarter and better at hunting on their own. New sensor and seeker capabilities could instead enable a fire-and-forget approach, where forces detect a submarine at long range and apply computer processing to get enough precision for an attack using long-range missiles with torpedo warheads. This would take away some of the long, tedious man-hours from hunting subs, while also decreasing flight times of helicopters and increasing the range of a lethal shot. There are a few other standout weapons to take out subs that can be used now. The first is the F-21, a relatively new torpedo being fielded by the French Navy. It can get up to 25 to 50 knots for an hour while searching for an enemy sub. Because it uses a quiet electric battery to power itself through the water, this lets its user fire at the enemy without giving up a position. There are also anti-submarine mortars and grenades. These are the shotgun equivalent of anti-submarine warfare. A few dozen rounds are fired at once and sink through the water. They then detonate against the submarine hull with a contact fuse. They're most lethal in short-range fights that could occur in a fjord or sea channel, but their downside is that an enemy submarine would have the advantage in a long-range fight where the sub's missiles and torpedoes could be launched. The other big development in recent years is the advancement of autonomous vehicles, the submarine of the future will likely need to shift from being frontline tactical platforms like aircraft to being host and coordination platforms like aircraft carriers. The submarine would deploy underwater unmanned vehicles to close in on the enemy. They would be harder to find and a lot easier to ride off if destroyed. Plus, they'd be armed to attack subs. The Navy has already developed the common very lightweight torpedo, which is less than a third the size of the smallest U.S. torpedo. A drone vessel could close in on an enemy ship or sub in the shallows, fire a volley of these short-range CVLTs, and fall back to the mothership sub lurking safely in the depths. What do you think about destroying subs? Let us know in the comments, and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Spotlight for more. Thanks for watching.